Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, RISA Live. Uh, my name is Cheng Song. I'm one of the engineers uh, working in the technical support team in RISA. Um, as many of you may already know, uh, we help users uh, with their technical questions and issues. And we also work with our development team to develop new features and enhancement of the programs. So today, um, in my presentation, I'm going to sh show you guys how to use the assessment design features in the program. And I will also uh, briefly touch on the current development um, that we are doing uh, of the new features and enhancement on the assessment portion of the pro uh, program. So um, due to the time limit, uh, I probably won't be able to dive into the uh, too much of the technical details, but hopefully um, this can be uh, uh, a useful quick review for you of what we do and what's coming up in the pipeline. So definitely uh, leave your questions um, uh, to the chat box, uh, chat box, and my colleagues will be monitoring that and help answer questions from there. Um, all right, so let's uh, dive right into it. So as you can see, I have a model uh, already built here uh, with a few uh, steel uh, frames. I have the moment frames in one direction, and I have the brace frames in the other direction. So for the brace frames, uh, I have the X brace um, and also uh, some uh, chevron brace as well. So um, if I turn on the data frame, I have already defined the data frames um, on the floor, floor level, which will allow me to uh, use my um, seismic uh, load generation to, to come up with the seismic load. So before we do the seismic design, an important step is, of course, to generate the seismic load. So in the program, there are actually uh, two ways uh, to come up with the seismic load. One way is to, is to use the seismic load generator, which is uh, from the advanced type and seismic. If I click on that, so here we can actually um, uh, pick your load combinations for your seismic weight and also um, your code and different parameters uh, that defines your um, seismic load calculation. So we actually had a recent live a few weeks ago talking about the details of how to um, generate lateral loads. So today I'm not gonna uh, dive into the details of this. But if you're interested in it, definitely look it up uh, for that recent live uh, videos and also uh, hit the bell and subscribe button below so uh, you're not missing any future contents of, uh, from us. So here after, I'm, I'm not gonna regenerate it. I just click close and I can actually uh, show you guys the seismic load I have already generated from my BLC spreadsheet. So under the BLC, we can see I have the ELZ, ELX, and also some electricity uh, BLCs here. That's my um, seismic load from that seismic load generator. If I go to the, the 3D view, I can actually turn on uh, my load display. If I go to one of the BLC, I can see uh, my seismic load uh, from that uh, generator. Uh, the seismic load, um, is, are being applied to the diaphragm level, pretty much at the center of the diaphragm. If you're using eccentricity cases, it's gonna uh, apply to the eccentricity um, nodes. Uh, but then the diaphragm will uh, distribute that load uh, to the, the frames uh, below. So uh, this is one way to do the assessment load gener uh, generation. Another way, um, uh, this way actually we use is the equivalent lateral force uh, measure from the code. Another way is uh, you can also do a uh, seismic load generation from the response spectral analysis, which you will be able to, you you will uh, need to use our um, dynamic solver. If you go to solve dynamics, click solve, this will bring up the dynamic um, solution dialog. In here, you can actually run the eigen solution for your model uh, to determine your frequency model frequencies and such, and also it will use that to um, calculate your response spectra. Um, you can define different response spectra from different codes and it will generate the, the response spectra forces for your structure as well. Again, I can't dig uh, too much um, deep into these today, but just quickly to show you guys uh, the features here. So once um, I'm done with my um, uh, seismic load DLCs, um, I can go to my load combination spreadsheet. Um, I can come up, I need to come up with my uh, seismic uh, load combinations. A great feature here is uh, you can go to the LC generator, um, enter the seismic tab, um, 
actually here, uh, we can help you to auto-populate all of these code required um, load combinations. So here I can select regions, uh, United States, and then the code. I can select different codes and also different design methods, AS, ASD or strengths. And then I can select my uh, seismic uh, load combination directions and also uh, with a bunch of different, I guess, seismic consideration factors, such as the redundancy factor, the vertical components. If you need, you can do the orthogonal uh, case as well. If you're a uh, note here, if you're using the RSA um, analysis force, you have to pick this option to get these uh, force referenced properly in the load combination. And also here you can use the overstrength load combinations. Um, um, and then with these, that will apply these load combinations to the members that we specify um, uh, we need the overstrength uh, consideration. So I have already generated a bunch of these uh, combinations already. So to save time, I'm not gonna regenerate them uh, right now. So we can see here, uh, you can definitely double check and make modify a uh, modification if needed here in your uh, low combination spreadsheet. So before uh, we run the model, we have the loads, the low combinations ready. Um, another important piece is to check the seismic design rules. So this is often the, the piece that many users, I guess, miss or forget. Um, you have to have a seismic design rule uh, and assign, properly assigned to members for them to get seismic design and also the detailing uh, checks. So here, if we look at the seismic design rule, we have three types that's uh, related to uh, steel frames. We have the column, beam, and braces. Um, we also have concrete wall type, but uh, that's not uh, relevant here for our uh, topic today. So if we go to the column tab, we can see here we have some predefined um, rules, but of course you can uh, create new ones if you want. Um, here under the columns, we can define the frame ductility um, per the code requirements. And also we can check if the column we want uh, it to have the overstrength uh, consideration. With this checkbox, the program will apply the overstrength load combinations to these members. So I guess one thing is uh, currently we're using this frame ductility uh, to apply to both column beams and braces, but I do know there are uh, codes, um, some codes require different ductilities for different members. We are working on enhancement, which uh, we will allow uh, a bit more flexibility on this. I will talk about this in the second part of my presentation today. So similarly, if we go to beam, um, we can see the, the beam, we can define the connections. That's pretty much the pre-qualified connections for the moment frames. If we're using um, uh, brace frames, just leave it that as none. Um, and also you can select the overstrength requirements and then the Z factor for the RBS um, uh, backbone connection and the hinge location if you need. Uh, similarly, under the brace, you can do the overstrength requirements as well, and the KL over R uh, uh, slenderness uh, requirements as well. So after, I guess, you are um, okay with your seismic um, design rule um, definition, uh, we need to assign them properly to the members. So assigning these are actually pretty simple, um, especially in the new interface of V18. So I can just say, go here, select uh, one frame. Um, I go to the hard row members uh, in the property panels on the left. If I go to the design properties, scroll all the way down, I can see there's a seismic uh, design rule um, property. I can just uh, assign the, the design rule here. It's either gonna be none or I can pick any of the existing design rule that I have defined. So similarly, once I'm done with that, I can go to um, Another uh, moment frames, I can just assign my seismic design rule there as well. Okay. So once I have already assigned all of my seismic design rules there, so um, from all my frames, so I don't need to redo that. Um, so once that's done, we are actually ready to run the solution. So I'm going to run the batch with all of the load combinations I have defined. Um, and we can, we're ready to take a look at the results. So of course, the first thing uh, we want to see is the code check results. That's just the standard spreadsheet. We, um, I guess for all members, 
uh, we can see the co the UC uh, members here and also the governing uh, low combinations. One thing to note here is if you see a little star on the LC numbers, that means the LC is uh, from the overstrength um, LC uh, low combination. So in addition to the typical uh, code check, an, an important piece is the seismic detailing uh, result spreadsheet. So that is, uh, I guess, a, a really important spreadsheet that summarizes all of the seismic detailing checks for you. So say, let's say here, a seismic um, detailing spreadsheet has three tabs, columns, beams, and braces. Under the columns, we can see my member labels and uh, the design rules I have assigned the ductility requirements, um, the UCs are repeated here as well. And for the, for the columns, the is checks whether they have failed or passed. And we also have the panel zone checks. Um, and what's even better is uh, the equations are listed here as well that used for this check and the continuity plate check and also the equations. Uh, for moment frames, we have the strong column weak beam ratio check. You can see these are not in the Brace frame check over there, and also the member that actually uh, contribute to the worst uh, ratio. And we also have a few miscellaneous check, uh, which you can check uh, the details in our help, uh, which uh, these checks cover. So if we go to the beam, similarly, um, it has uh, the ductility, slenderness. Uh, one thing is the beam has the required shear and moment uh, strength for the connection, which is calculated based on the beam. Um, lateral strengths and also um, uh, to determine what's the required uh, force for the connection. And also it has the, the column beam ratio check and also the span depth ratio check uh, for the pre-qualified connection requirements. So lastly, if we go to the braces, we can see um, in the brace ductility, UC slenderness, and one thing is uh, special for brace is the required tension and compression uh, strength for the connection, which is calculated based on the expected strength of the brace. And also uh, for um, chevron braces, if I scroll down, we do calculate the unbalanced vertical force to the beam. Um, and also we show you which beam um, that is. Um, so this is a great resource um, to check the summary of all seismic results, but actually I personally prefer um, a better place is uh, to use the detail reports. So if I go to the detail report button, click one of the moment frame uh, columns, I scroll down. So above is the typical code checks. So if you go to the bottom, you can actually see we have the seismic detailing results here. Um, so here, um, the, 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 the good part about this that I like is uh, it actually shows you every single detail, uh, steps of the calculation. So here we do see the, the I guess, the, the basic properties of the columns, whether it's been designed uh, to the overstrands, um, LCs, the ductility requirements for the flange and webs, you can see all of the, I guess, the field check are highlighted in uh, red. So for your, I guess, quick uh, review. And here we do list all of the, I guess, the slenderness check with the equations and the detailed numbers. See the panels on summary. We have, I guess, the beam with uh, demand and equations and also capacity are listed. So similar for the continuity plates, every single number are uh, listed uh, in details here. Uh, for your for your review. Um, similarly, if we go to beams, uh, uh, I guess um, this part is very similar for beams and columns. But the beam does have something special for the say the flange bracing that requires strength and stiffness. Uh, all of these calculations are here with the code reference, and also how the program calculate the required connection uh, shear and moment based on the beam's uh, flexural strengths. We can see this is the gravity part of the shear and also the, the shear contributed from uh, based on the beam um, flexural strengths. So that's pretty much about the moment frame. Uh, for, the, for the brace frame, I guess we took a look at the, the brace members. Uh, for the brace, also, um, 
I guess we have all of the basic things and something special is the to brace is the required connection strength, which is based on both the brace compression or tension expected strength with the equation listed and also the, the values calculated. Uh, for Chevron brace, we will also see the unbalanced force on beam calculation. Um, so the program does calculate the unbalanced force for you at the current state, but it is not automatically included in the beam code check. So you, uh, the user may need to uh, manually supplement this check uh, for their beam design. But actually, um, we're going to talk about this real soon. Like we are um, enhancing this feature, so we the program will be able to provide you. I guess uh, automatic design for all members. So that was pretty much, I guess, a very quick review of what the program currently uh, does. I like to take, I guess, the last few minutes to show you guys um, the current development work that we're working on and what's coming up in the pipeline. Um, so if I close these, uh, I can bring up my presentation slide here. Um, so these are, I guess, a very quick and brief list of the work we're doing right now. Uh, definitely, we're working on the code updates uh, for AIC 341, 358, 2016. I know it's, uh, I guess, it's a little bit overdue, but uh, it's 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 coming up very soon. So uh, you should have it very soon. Um, the second part is a very, I guess, a major part of a new feature that I personally. I'm very excited about. Uh, we're introducing the, the BRB design to the program. So the users will be able to select different BRB size from manufacturers. Um, and then the program will calculate the parameters for the, the BRB braces, such as the, 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 the strength adjustment factors, omega and beta, and also the stiffness adjustment factors, KF, and also provide the, the, the brace design check. Uh, uh, also, for column and beams, the program uh, will be able to use the brace uh, at adjusted uh, strengths uh, automatically. Um, apply these as uh, like apply load um, under the hood to calculate uh, to do your column and beam and design check. So hopefully, uh, with these new features, we can provide you a complete uh, package to help you uh, in your BRB uh, design projects. Another piece uh, is we're enhancing the current design of ICBF. Um, so um, currently, the ICBF design, as I just showed you guys, um, we are considering, I guess, the overstrength um, uh, design checks and all that. Uh, we are calculating the unbalanced force for you uh, to the beam, but you may need to manually add that to your beam check. But with this enhancement, uh, we will uh, the program will uh, consider both the capacity limit design uh, load effect uh, per the AIC 341F 2.3, and also the exception 2A, which is the overstrength requirements. So you don't need to do. Hopefully, you don't need to do any, I guess, manual uh, supplemental of the check. The program should be able to check all the the cases uh, per the code uh, section requirements and give you the final design uh, UC check for uh, the cons and beams for these uh, SCBF systems. Um, another thing is we're updating the seismic design with spreadsheet. As I mentioned, currently the ductility check is, uh, there's only one ductility requirements for all different members. Uh, we're uh, imp uh, improving that so you can define different ductilities for cons and beams and braces. And also, we're taking this chance to revamp uh, this uh, design rule spreadsheet. So hopefully, it will be much easier and uh, uh, clearer for you to use. Um, so we definitely um, have more development um, ongoing right now. But due to the time limit, uh, I can't show you all of them. But definitely hit the subscribe button below. And so you can stay tuned with other uh, updates in the future. Uh, that's pretty much concludes my presentation. Um, thank you everyone for joining me today. Hopefully it was helpful uh, to you. Definitely leave your comments below um, for questions or any future, I guess, uh, contents you'd like to see. Hopefully, I mean, you're enjoying it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.